What is Microsoft Bookings and which version is right for you? Microsoft Bookings is an application that allows you to set up blocks of time on your calendar so that people can book meetings with you. Now there's two different flavors of this application. There's personal and there's shared. In this video, we're talking about the personal version of bookings and we'll walk through how to set one up so that you can decide if it works within your business practices. Now, the shared bookings I've already covered in another video and there will be a link in the description below. Personal bookings may be the right tool for you if you want to feel like you have more control of your Outlook calendar. It allows you to easily share your availability with your own bookings page. I have navigated to the bookings application and under the personal booking page section, let's click on create meeting type. The first thing that you need to do is specify a meeting type. This can be something generic so that people can just grab some time with you regardless of the topic, or it can be for a specific reason. In this example, I specifically want people to book time during my office hours where they can drop in and ask questions about the tools that I support. Selecting a category is optional, but it can be useful because it will help you to see at a glance the different types of events on your calendar. The categories you see in the dropdown are set up in Outlook settings. You should give your meeting type a description so that people will know what you intend for these time blocks. I have put a simple description, but you can add more details if necessary for your business process. The location is going to be a Teams meeting by default. However, you can toggle this off and enter a physical location if that applies to you. In today's example, I do want an online meeting. Next, you need to decide the time duration for each meeting. 30 minutes is the default, but you can click the drop down arrow to choose a different meeting length or create a custom time. Then you will decide if this meeting type is public and available to anyone who can see your personal bookings page or should it be private and only certain people will get a link to book time with you. For example, if you're working on a specific project with a limited number of people, private may be optimal. In this case, office hours are open to anyone who can see my bookings calendar. Under Schedule Customization, you can choose to allow people to book a meeting with you anytime there is free space on your calendar during your normal business hours, or you can click the drop down and choose Custom Availability Hours. The first customization option you have is to choose a specific date range for the meeting type. This is useful when working on projects. For example, you can choose the month of August. The meeting type will only show up on your bookings page during these applicable dates. I am going to remove the date range for office hours because this is a type of meeting that is not time bound. Now, if we scroll down, you can see the standard hours are selected. However, office hours are only available on Tuesday mornings and Thursday afternoons. Since Tuesday morning office hours are from 10 a.m. until 12, I'm going to use the drop down boxes next to each time marker so that I can set those boundaries. When I save this meeting type, everything except those two options will be grayed out on the bookings calendar, preventing people from booking office hours on days that I have allocated for other tasks. We have the minimum criteria, but towards the bottom of the page, you'll see this button for advanced options. And here we can customize it a little bit more. Here you can set a buffer time before or after the meeting to build in a little bit of time to transition from one person to the other. You must choose one of the options in the dropdown list because customization does not exist for buffer time. The other thing that you can do is you can limit the start time to specific intervals. Now this is a 30 minute meeting, so therefore it is choosing 30 minute intervals. But let's say I want all meetings to start at the top of the hour, I can switch it to one hour intervals. The next thing to look at is minimum and maximum lead time. Now for these office hours, I don't mind if people just drop in and book an appointment at the last minute. So I'm gonna put one hour, which is the smallest increment we can choose. 
For maximum lead time, however, I do want to limit that to something like 90 days so that people don't forget that they have an appointment on my calendar. And speaking of making sure that people don't forget they have an appointment with you, you can send out email reminders. Again, this is something that you have to choose from the list and you cannot customize the time intervals. You also have the option to set up a follow-up email message. Now that we have customized everything that we want for this particular meeting type, all you need to do is go back to the top of the page and click on save. This will take you back to the bookings homepage where you can see your new meeting type. Let's take a quick look at what your booking page looks like. Next to the words personal booking page, click on the copy button, which to me looks like two pieces of paper stacked on top of each other. And then I'm just gonna pop that into another browser window. At the top of the page, you will see the meeting type. Now in this case, we only have one. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you will see available times based on which meeting type was selected and then the person can choose the date and time that is most relevant to them. When they click next, a floating dialog box will appear that will have their name and email address, and this information is taken from your company's global address list. And then the person can enter some notes to help both of you prepare for the upcoming meeting. The person will click book and two things will happen. A meeting is set up on both of your calendars and you will receive an email letting you know that someone used your booking link. If the person wants to cancel the meeting or reschedule, they can do so from the bookings page. Now I want to draw your attention to the top right hand corner of the screen and we're going to click on my bookings page. This is going to give you a view of the page where you can make some slight customizations. Notice that there is a banner image at the top and there are three dots towards the right hand side. When you click on that you will see a few options. You can edit the banner image or you can turn off your bookings page. If you click the drop down on the share button, you have three more options. You can get a copy link, share your bookings page via email, or you can set up your email signature. Let's take a look at that last option and click email signature settings. The email signature settings floating dialog box that opens is the same one as you will see if you were to go to your Outlook settings. Now I have two email signatures set up. So if I click on include a link to my bookings page, it will put a hyperlink at the bottom of my signature block. Then I would need to click the drop down and select my second signature so that I can click include a link to my bookings page again. It does not automatically apply to every single signature that you have. When you are done making your changes, click on save. I'm going to navigate to my Outlook calendar so that I can share an important tip with you. Adding meeting types to your bookings page does not prohibit people from putting other types of meetings on your calendar during the times you published. So let's say a coworker put a random meeting on my calendar during my office hours for an unrelated topic. The meeting will show up on my calendar and it will remove availability from my bookings page. I can't block my calendar to prevent this because it would also remove the time from the bookings page. I did find a workaround by customizing the Outlook work hour settings to make my office hour show as unavailable. If you are interested in learning how to do that, drop a comment below. Now we've walked through the basic steps of setting up a personal bookings page so you can decide if this is the right tool for you. If it is, now all you need to do is let people know how to book time with you. If you need to learn more about how to manage a bookings page for a team of people, watch the video that's on the screen now.